All right, this is going to be, sorry about the sound on uh, lesson number four of the day of the Lord versus the day of Christ. I think I fixed the problem. Turn your King James Bibles to the book of the Lamentations of Jeremiah. This is Lamentations was, um, if you've ever heard of lamenting, oh, lamenting means you're in sorrow over something that happened. Jeremiah was greatly saddened that Jerusalem and Judah was destroyed, uh, almost quite a bit destroyed by um, in the Lord's anger. Some were killed, others were taken into captivity into the land of Babylon. And you can read about the continuation of that in the book of Daniel. They were taken into captivity for seven years. So let's read the book of Lamentations, chapter 2. And we're doing a study on the day of the Lord versus the day of Christ. Well, the day of the Lord is the language used for the Old Testament. And then the day of Christ is used, obviously, for the New Testament. So let's take a look. Verse 1. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger, and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger? Remember the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's footstool. The Lord hath swallowed, the Lord hath swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob, and hath not pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. Now, when they took a horn, they'd fill it with oil, and then they would anoint the head of somebody with oil, whether it was a uh, prophet or oftentimes a king or a ruler, a leader. So the horn has reference to leadership. So it says, He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoureth round about. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary, and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was as, as an enemy. He hath swallowed up Israel. He hath swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of Judah, mourning and lamentation. And we're not talking about morning, afternoon, night. We're talking about morning as in as if somebody died that you cared about. A widow wearing black that loves her husband who died. That kind of morning. Verse 6. And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle, as if it were of a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord hath caused the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion, and hath despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. Now why is that? Well, because the kings and the priests were teaching and doing wickedness. The priest was teaching the people wickedness and the king was doing wickedness. I mean, it's it's not much different than it is today. I mean, you go to Washington, D.C., and you go to the average churches. Churches don't teach the Word of God. Let's face it, most churches are creations of the state. 
They're tax-exempt businesses. They don't teach the Word of God. Oh, yeah, they'll tell you about John 3.16. And um, they'll teach you about the pre-trib rapture, and they'll tell you about tithing. But they won't tell you about repentance. I, I honestly, I don't think, I think without repentance, I don't think, I don't think anybody can be saved without repentance. I really don't. I mean, Jesus said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Verse 7. The Lord hath cast off his altar. He hath abhorred. What does abhorred mean? It means hated. Extreme hatred. He hath abhorred his sanctuary. He hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of a solemn feast. The Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore he made the rampart, rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king's I'm sorry, her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. We're probably talking about the false prophets here. Because there were prophets of God and they fell away. And the Lord sent them, well, he didn't send them what he wanted taught anymore he sent them a delusion the elders of the daughter of zion sit upon the ground and keep silent they have cast dust upon their heads they have girded themselves with sackcloth the virgins of jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground mine eyes do fail with tears have you ever cried until there's no more tears? My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children and the suckling swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, Where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the street of the city, when their soul Soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? Well, that's an easy answer, the Lord. Verse 14. The prophets have seen vain... Vain means worthless. The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. They have, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. But they have, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. You ever been to a, a good a, a musical performance where everybody, you know, really good one and everybody claps their hands? It means they're happy. So I guess these are the um, these are the enemy. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. The Lord hath done that which he had devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pitied, and he had caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversaries. Their hearts cried unto the Lord. 
O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eyes of thine eyes cease. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. So evidently there was famine. There was war. Verse 20. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Yeah, the Babylonians came with their swords and they, they killed them. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger, so that in the day of the Lord's anger, none escaped nor remained. Those that I have swaddled, swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. Boy, I tell you what, they don't, they don't teach this stuff in the pre-trib rapture churches. I mean, if God would do this to the chosen people. Is America any different than Jerusalem of old? I think not. And in Matthew 24, let's take a look at that real quick. You know, in Matthew 24, the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, what's it going to be like, you know, at the end of the world? And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but let's go to verse 21. Jesus said, for then shall, for then shall be great tribulation. Tribulation means trouble. For then shall be great tribulation, such as such as was not since the beginning of the world to, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Well, things sounded pretty bad in the days of Jer 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 uh, Jeremiah. What we just read in, you know, Jer Lamentations chapter 2. And i got to admit, it's been a long time since I've read Lamentations and Jeremiah. I mean, I read from it, but I haven't read the whole book in quite a while. It's it's depressing. It really is. And every time I read Jeremiah, I think of the United States and the European Union. They're they're no different than than the people of old. No different. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Do you know that if the Lord didn't come back, there'd it'd be complete and utter devastation and destruction, the extinction of the human race? There should no flesh be saved, but... For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Why? Next verse. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth 
even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Trust me, when Christ returns, everybody's going to see it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be no secret rapture thingy. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You know, this ties in with Joel, which we're getting to. We're, I'm going to do the uh, Day of the Lord versus the day of Christ, because that's what covers in Joel, and then they talks about the sun being darkened, Lord pouring out a spirit upon all flesh, just like the day of Pentecost. And then it ties in with uh, John's uh, book of the Revelation. And Revelation's not a secret thing. It, revela a revelation means to, to have something revealed. I mean... It's to be revealed. But people read the book of Revelation, and they've never read the Old Testament, and the Bible pulls all its symbolism from the rest of the Bible, you know, and if you've never read the Old Testament, and you read the book of Revelation, you're like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Well, of course not. All the symbolism comes from the Old Testament, a lot of it. Book of Isaiah. Probably the most quoted book in the New Testament. Never read it? Jesus quotes Isaiah, and you've never bothered to, to, to waste your time to read it? I mean, I know our time's valuable, but, you know, God's going to deceive. People that go to churches, so-called, actually they're state businesses, tax-exempt businesses, where the preachers teach tithing and they teach the pre-trib rapture and they don't preach repentance? Really? God's going to deceive these people. Jesus says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the star shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Oh, yeah. And then it says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. Well, I just did a big study on the, the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. What does it mean when a branch is tender? It means it's it's a new branch. And putteth forth leaves. Well, you know, leaves come before the fruit. But you notice there's no fruit on this tree. It's just new branches and leaves. That's it. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. See, Christ is telling us, when the sun is darkened and the moon doesn't give her light, uh, it's getting close. And it tells you there's going to be false Christs and false prophets showing signs and wonders before he comes. You know, the sun's going to be darkened, the moon's not going to give her light, the stars are going to fall from heaven, and that heaven's going to be shaken. I mean, when you start seeing this stuff, you know it's almost time. Verse 
Verse 33, So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Unless, of course, you listen to J Dr. Dr. James White, who says, well, you know, the words passed away, but we've got these, all these different Bible manuscripts, and, you know, we got to figure out which ones are really what Jesus said, and, you know, we're not sure, but, you know, we're going to figure it out. And I tell you what, I think God's words are in the King James Bible. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, that's a Greek rendering of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who did the flood take away? The wicked. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Well, I'll tell you what. At the end of the flood, who was taken and who was left? Who was left behind after the flood? Noah and his family. And churches will teach the opposite of what Christ is teaching here. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know, two in the field, one taken, one left, two women, one taken, one left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or allowed and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the, his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. You see, people, if you're going to hang out with the wicked and eat and drink with the drunken, Instead of doing the Lord's work, well, guess what? You know, I've met so many people that uh, lived like the devil for the devil. And they're like, oh, yeah, man, you know, when I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come to Christ. Yeah, maybe you will and maybe you won't. Maybe you'll have an accident on the way to the hospital and die and you won't get that chance you know in the day of Noah it was the Lord himself that closed the door to the ark and he shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. 
and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. The flood. Jesus made our direct reference to the flood of Noah. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the window windows of heaven were opened. So it wasn't just rain that came down. There was some um, springs that were, you know, the fountains of the deep. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And the salt same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every kind, they and every beast after its kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded them. And the Lord shut him in. And the Lord shut him in. You see, Noah didn't close the door. The Lord did. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. See, this right here makes me think. People that say, well, the flood was local, it wasn't worldwide. I don't know. I mean, it's... What can I tell you? And all the high hills, all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Isn't it strange? They found seashells on the top of Mount Everest. That's what I've read. I don't know if it's true. I've never been there. I never climbed Mount Everest. Never got a helicopter ride up there. So, 15 cubits upward did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered. A cubit is approximately 18 inches. So, what is that, like 25 feet? And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things in the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth in hundred and fifty days. Did Jesus know what he was talking about when he talked about the flood of Noah? I think so. You see, there was great wickedness in the days of Noah, much violence. The flood of Noah was salvation. That was his salvation. It was a fresh start. You know, uh, the wicked one would probably, if the Lord hadn't protected Noah and his family, they probably would have killed him. But I'm sure the Lord and his angels protected them. But um, God basically wiped the slate clean. He erased the blackboard, started over. Let's read Second Peter chapter 2. And you're going to hear heretics tell you that 2 Peter is a fake book and doesn't belong in the Bible. Well, because it speaks about them. Verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were 
false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false pro uh, false teachers among you. Yeah, that's that's people tell you the Second Peter doesn't belong in the Bible. Uh, this is talking about them. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. And through covetousness they shall with feigned words teach you about the uh, tithing. Oh, well, wait, no, that's not what, well, it, that's, that's the Bob translation. And through covetousness they shall with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Listen carefully. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah. You see, the flood of Noah was to save him. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Do you know that they were digging around the Dead Sea area where Sodom and Gomorrah is? And you know what they found? A layer of glass in the sand. Do you know what takes, I forget how many degrees it is. I'd have to look it up. I don't want to. You could look it up. Um, they, uh, they make glass from sand. You know, like the beach. Sand. Silica. And they it, basically it's melted sand. And you cannot build a fire in an open, an open a fire in an open area. You know, like building a bonfire. You cannot build a fire hot enough to melt sand into glass. It's impossible. It has to be in an enclosed area where it concentrates the heat. And you just can't take wood, make it hot enough to turn sand into glass. Well, you know where they also found this um, this glass-like stuff? Um, they found it in the desert in the 40s, in the areas where they did the nuclear testing, like what I think Alamogordo, around Alamogordo, New Mexico. They, they, they exploded the atomic bomb. It actually had high enough heat to turn the sand into glass. And they found this around the area of the Dead Sea where Sodom and Gomorrah were. Somehow, the sand melted into glass. And yet, of course... Uh, if you want to read about this, I believe it was in the book um, The Bible is History by Warner, Warner, I forget his last name. It's Warner something or other. The Bible is History. It was written in the 50s. He was a German archaeologist, a uh, great scholar. It's a very good book. Uh, you can't even get books that good anymore. I used to have it. Uh, Uh, it was taken kind of, well, I don't have it anymore. Wish it did. I had an original copy from the 50s. Softback. It was a great book. 
should read it sometime. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an, an example and an sample unto those that after should live ungodly. San Francisco, are you listening? Verse 7, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. That's the day of the Lord, people. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceiving while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Uh, Balaam was a prophet of the Lord who was hired by the wicked and given money. And he, he became a false prophet for money. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, um, I think he's in the book of Kings or Judges. I forget which, but yeah, if you don't know the story of Balaam, you, you should read the whole Bible cover to cover. Uh, the Bible starts in Genesis 1-1, people. The Bible doesn't start in the New Testament, by the way. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. Yeah, there was a, an ass. He was riding an ass. And it spoke unto him. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. Boy, when I read this, I think of TBN. Through much, through much wantonness, those that were a clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You know, it's if, if you live in unrighteousness and then you find out the truth of God and righteousness, but then you turn away from it and go back to your wickedness. I mean, when it comes time for judgment, you're going to be worse off. I mean, you'd be better at being an ignorant, never knowing the the ways of the Lord than to know the ways and turn 
turn against the Lord and go back to your filth. Verse 22. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. You ever seen a dog throw up? And what do they do? They lick it back up. I've, my dad used to, my dad rescued so many dogs. He had over 20 dogs in our, my lifetime. And that's true. Dog would throw something up and then eat it back down. I was like, uh, you know, if something's not good in your stomach, why are you going to put it back in? The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, that's a pig, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You could take a pig, and you could baptize a pig, and get it nice and clean, but guess what? That pig is going to go right back to the mud. And that's what they do. So, people, does that sound like, um, you know, the flood of Noah? Uh, it's, but, but the Lord promised. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And Satan says, Ooh, we got too many people on the earth. We got to depopulate the earth to save the earth. Have an abortion. But God says, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even all the green herb have I given you all things. But life, I'm sorry, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And what does uh, TV have an obsession with? Vampires drinking blood. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require, at the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God, made he man. You see, we're made in God's image. And murderers, why does God, why does Satan love to kill man through wars and various things? Because when Satan looks at God, uh, man, he sees God's image. And he hates God. He tried to overthrow him. So, when you get a murderer, and I wonder how many murderers are possessed of devils or demon, you know, demonic possession. I don't know, but when the day of judgment comes, we'll find out. But I, I suspect it's quite a few. Which is why God said, execute murderers. Put them, put evil away. There's, you know, there's a reason why God says to do these things. Now that we say, no, well, you know, that's wrong. It's wrong for the state to kill, you know. And, um, so we'll, we'll just build prisons and uh, let private corporations make profits on it and make r lawyers rich and, you know, uh, have the state pay for lawyers and judges and prisons and raise your taxes up sky high and let the prisoners escape and go out and murder again or we'll let them go off on technicalities and you know and you know because god's stupid right god's laws they were all nailed to the cross right i'll tell you what 
The Bible said that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. If you got three, two, three witnesses that somebody murdered somebody, they that you know, and with malice, that you should get rid of them. Period. And the Bible says that if you committed perjury, you had two people saying that somebody killed somebody, but you, 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 you can show that they were lying. You were supposed to put the perjurers to death. The same, give them the same penalty that they tried to give to the other person. I'll tell you what, if we follow those rules, you would not have very many people committing perjury. It just wouldn't happen. You know, well, it would happen, but not very often. Cops would think twice about planting evidence. Verse 7. And you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed, or children, after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. See, this is the covenant of Noah. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be local floods. But there's not going to ever, ever, ever again be a worldwide flood. God made a promise to Noah. Now check this out. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. What is perpetual? It means forever. I do set my bow in the cloud. And it's talking about a, what we call a rainbow. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Now it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water, water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I shall look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Isn't it interesting how the Sodomites want to take God's sign, the, the rainbow of the covenant, and make it their sign? Oh, yeah. Boy, I tell you what, that, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're mocking God. And they're proud of it. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Uh, let's see. Well, let's go back to verse 16. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. And then you can, if you keep reading, you'll see where Noah cursed Canaan. Which makes an interesting study. I'm not sure why. There's several different theories, but I don't want to get into it. But um, I wonder if they intermarried with the Canaanites later on. I don't know. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I think um, this is it for this. This is uh, number five for the day of the Lord versus the day of Christ. And the day of the Lord's going to be 
the end time. Oh, wait, no, we're not done. We're not done. One more thing. All right. Uh, so there's not going to be another flood. Well, when the Lord comes back and wants to destroy everything, uh, what's how's he going to do it? Well, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 tells you, verse 1, Paul and Sylvanius and Timothy as unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you, all toward each other, aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Boy, uh, when's the last time you heard a church telling you about patience and faith and persecutions and tribulation? No, 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 no. They teach tithing in the pre-trib rapture. Verse 5. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. What does recompense mean? It means payback. God's going to pay back trouble to them that bother you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. See, next time, ain't going to be no water. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. What day? The day of the Lord, or the day of Christ. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. Boy, I hope I'm counted worthy of this calling. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that in uh, that the name of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, no, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of of our God and the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So, the flood of Noah was the salvation of Noah and his family. And the next time, and just like Jer Jerusalem was destroyed, the the end times is going to be even worse. And the Lord's going to have to shorten the days or no flesh is going to be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. When the Lord comes, everybody's going to see him. It's not going to be no secret little rapture thingy. The false Christ has to come first. I mean, that's, that's a given. And when the Lord does return, He's going to come in flaming fire to repay those that made problems and killed his children, his saints, those in Christ. So, all right, well, we're going to be um, closing this out. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen.